Hi friends, so I started um, collecting clips for a vlog, but I realized I didn't really speak to the camera yet, so I'll do that now and I'll give you a little update. Uh, yesterday we had our vaccinations, second vaccinations for the coronavirus. And we took the day off from work today because we're feeling... Yesterday I felt fine and this morning we both just feel a little bit shitty. Um, I just took an Advil and I feel like inside my body is having a conflict. <laughs> I feel it everywhere. Um, anyway, so I'll probably take today's um, opportunity to read a little bit and I wanted to tell you about what I'm reading. So, um, I am reading The Discomfort of Evening by uh, Marieke Lucas Reineveld. Um, they are a non-binary Dutch author. Um, this book won the 2020 International Booker Prize. So I saw it kind of circulating around because like with any book that wins the booker, um, it makes its rounds. Um, so I finally saw this at like a local um, bookstore that doesn't usually have so many English titles. You hear the siren? I'm living on like really busy street and it's a uh, Thursday afternoon, so it's pretty busy. Um, anyway, this uh, bookshop doesn't have a lot of English titles, but then I saw this one and I thought like, okay, I'm gonna get it and give it a try. I'm about halfway through um, I've seen only kind of either negative or just generally disappointing reviews about this book, um, recently, so, yeah, I don't know yet what I feel about it, um, I think I want to read a little bit more before I share my thoughts, but actually I set this aside, um, and I started reading Outline by Rachel Cusk. And it's my first Rachel Cusk. Um, she has a new book out called The Second Place, or I think it's not out yet that I really, really want to read. So I wanted to give this one a try before. Um, I am like 70% through it. I'm reading it on my Kindle, obviously. Um, I'm loving it. It's, I think she calls it auto fiction. Um, so it is a novel. But yeah, auto fiction. Um, I love the style so far. I really love her writing voice. It takes place in Athens and Greece. Greece is one of my favorite um, countries I've ever been. It's my favorite place to go when I have time off from work. Um, the few times that we've been there, it's just amazing. So just the whole vibe, like it's about this character who, at least so far, I don't know what her name is and there's no descriptions of her. Um, she's teaching a writing course in Athens. She flies from England to Greece to teach this writing course. And the whole first chapter is like taking place on the airplane. And just like during these days when we can't travel anywhere, I just really found it like fun to read that. Um, anyway, I love it so far. A lot. It's the first one in a trilogy, so I'm definitely, I plan to read all of them. And probably gonna finish it today. Um, and then maybe I can come back and like talk to you about it later. I also thought about um, filming a like booktube newbie tag video, which is sort of, it gives you like some more information about me, about like my reading and why I like booktube and things like that. So maybe I'll do that. We'll see how I feel um, later today. It seems like a good day to do it actually because I, I don't have so much energy to like do anything physical. Um, that's it. See you later.
ครับครับครับครับครับ drop a sock inside down in and around like a kilo of salt I use the pasta with the bag and no waste just like three minutes each side <laughs> until the plastic is fully like browned and melted Oh. <laughs> How much wine can we fit in one video? Hi, so I'm back with a little update. I wish that I was reading a little bit more over the weekend. But just like, you know, things are happening, the day is going on, I'm just like not finding the time. I am finally on the last chapter of Outline by Rachel Cusk. I love it. And you know, there are those books. Every time I like um, pick it back up over the last like few days since I started it, I keep like wishing that I had just sort of read it in one sitting or like maybe two. There are those books that are like nice to dip in and out of. And with this, I just, I feel like there's a certain kind of flow that would be sort of magical if you read it like in one thing. And so I'm still really, really enjoying it. And I'm also wondering if I should really like say all of my thoughts inside the vlog or if I should save those thoughts for like my wrap up so I don't know what to do about that I'm gonna keep thinking about that but um what was I saying I had a few glasses of wine um what was I saying oh I'm still really enjoying it I'm just kind of wishing that I had read it in like one um more of like a flow Hi, it's Monday. Okay, I'm here with an update. I have many thoughts, let's go. First thought is, I feel like this vlog is an utter failure. Um, I, I just feel like, maybe it won't seem so jumbled, but I, I feel like it's a lot of clips that don't have any context. So please be like brutally honest with me in the comments and tell me, at the end of all of this, how it was for you and what you thought and what you think can be better. I mean, started from the bottom. We're starting from the bottom and we're gonna make our way somewhere. I'm sure they'll get better as I get the hang of it. Um, I also just don't know like how much are you interested in that's not about the book that I'm reading because I feel like I wanna make that um, the focus, but then while I'm editing, I'm like not seeing a lot. I'm just seeing a lot of random clips that aren't related. So is that also interesting? 
You can just tell me. Okay, let's talk Outline. So, Outline by Rachel Cusk. Wow, I loved it. First of all, bottom line. I feel like I, I'm i gonna share my more in-depth thoughts here. And then, not that I will have read that much by my March wrap-up, just because at this pace I'm going, like. I don't, I don't accomplish that many books in one month, but just to make those videos a little bit more like summary vibes and not like talking for hours about each thing, I thought I can dedicate time inside the vlog to like really flesh out my thoughts. I wrote a lot of notes while I was um, reading this, which was fun. Her writing style, it like the way that this is built, there's no plot, which I like. Um, plot is not something that I feel is like a necessary thing in a book for me in order to enjoy it. Um, I mean, I love that also, but if I know that I'm going into something that's kind of plotless, I can really, really enjoy as long as I, you know, identify with the writing style or that it um, interests me, this writer. And so Cusk, love her like i already want to read the rest of the series i want to read everything she wrote she's such a great writer there's something like very observational about this particular book and it's it's said that it's kind of like 10 conversations like there's 10 chapters and each one is sort of a conversation that's sort of one-sided because this character, like we don't know anything about her, the, the narrator, it's from first person. You don't know anything about her really. You don't get any physical description of her. So I thought that was so interesting that I was like, you know, normally when I'm reading something, I can imagine what this person looks like or I just have some image to anchor me and you don't have that in this book there's no physical description so you have no idea what she looks like in your head I mean you can kind of build your own characteristics but n not really you don't have enough information um, and all of these kind of conversations are like one-sided in the sense that it's like people offering almost like confessional episodes to her and she doesn't really you know that there's no dialogue that she really offers back so um yeah so i'm gonna read through my thoughts there's a lot of like looking looking in on other people and their lives and their experiences um and like just perceiving things from the outside. I feel like this character is sort of, I mean, she's integrated into her environment, but she's also like, a, she's, I feel like she's perceiving, she's looking at others. And so, yeah, I thought like the title outline could also somehow, it somehow connected me to like an outline being sort of like this border of, the experience of life that is like experiencing it as yourself and then perceiving an experience from the outside and how what you see can affect what you feel or what you um, can remind you of something or I don't know. I hope that's clear in some way. I wrote marriage, love, loss of love, or loss of structural love, AKA marriage, and divorce and parenthood. These are all kind of themes that are running throughout this book. We wrote like a lot of observation and I loved that. I loved that it's, it's sort of plotless and it's based on observations that she has. And then these like conversations with all these different characters that are coming in and out of her environment and that they all seem sort of like compelled to kind of like vomit their deepest stuff to her sometimes. And that was so interesting. And I also feel like sometimes I feel like that person. <laughs> so I thought that was interesting. The, the things that make up who we are and the course we put ourselves on and the events that lead to each other to make up our life. Um, I feel like a lot of the characters are also like 
uh, reflecting back on, I don't know, their old marriages or like, for example, the first character she interacts with is the man she's sitting next to on the airplane and who kind of like reoccurs throughout the book. And he's mostly like going back in time and like talking through all of his marriages and like what their faults were or or what he still, what has completely faded away and what like doesn't leave his memory or experience in the present time. Um, so yeah, like the things that, that, the events in our life that like lead up to the place we are at now an outline filled with our experiences, but also what is reflected back to us by other people and dictated by roles that we play in life, aka being a parent or being um, a husband or a wife. So in general, I felt like this book reads like life. It reads, yeah, it's, it's like life. It's like you see something and it reminds you of something that you, like you smell something and it, and it reminds you of something from your childhood or um, it's like there's a pacing to this book that feels very real. It's like, it's like simple, but it just, it feels like life. That's like the thing I can say about it. All of those like confusing thoughts. Um, I really, really loved it. Like really loved it. And I'm so curious what the other two are like. I think it's transit and kudos. So I will start transit soon. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm interested to see how it progresses and like if there is some kind of continuation or... Yeah, also I liked the autofiction vibes. I liked the Grease vibes. I liked... Oh yeah, I just thought it was fascinating. I really like the style. It like um, definitely speaks to something in me. I very much enjoy. So I'm excited to read more, Rachel. So after that, I picked back up The Discomfort of Evening. Um, I just don't know. Like I'm, I'm hesitant to DNF it because I do, well, first of all, I feel like I'm 160 pages in and it's like, I have another 100 pages and a bit before it's over. So I feel like I've passed the halfway mark and I want to, I do want to finish it. I just, I'm not sure that it's right now. <laughs> I'm not sure I can do it right now. It's just like I'm I'm reading a few pages and I'm just I can't get into it. Um oh no. I'm I'm wondering like I'm at that point. So I'm like in the most uncomfortable position. It's when I'm like wondering whether to push through or to set it aside and come back to it. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'll try to update you if I have other feelings about that. There's also one specific scene in Outline, in, yeah, one, one specific moment that keeps coming back to my head that I wanna talk about, or just reiterate this kind of like feeling of life. He's on a boat with a person, and there's a moment when there's another boat that comes and anchors there, and it's like a family and she's kind of viewing this family and and so is the person that she's with and they're they're kind of like discussing things that they see and also like how those things um reflect them to them their own lives and just like everyone knows those moments you know you can just say like comparing yourself to others if you want to make it really really small but everyone knows those moments where you view other people's lives and they can either mirror something really similar to yours or very different. And like, then it can almost skew your sense of like personal, um, like how much you know yourself. I still can't find the right words, but it was just this, this kind of thing. You know these things and Rachel Cusk just has 
the words for them. And I heard, saw an interview with her and she, she said like writing is about being able to show on paper to readers things that they really relate to, but they wouldn't know how to verbalize. Um, like, oh, you read it and you're like, wow, yes. I know that, like I experience that all the time. I just like, no one put it that way or, or no one showed it to me in that way. That's sort of like the feeling I had like constantly in this book. Just another thought for you. I'm still trying to find like suitable lighting for when I want to film something in the evening. Just cause I'm filming it on an iPhone and the quality is just shit in the night time, so. I just wanted to say a few thoughts about this book, actually. I'm just gonna read you the back first so you have some context. 10-year-old Yas has a unique way of experiencing her universe. The feeling of utter ointment on her skin as protection against harsh farmyard winters, the texture of green warts like capers on migrating toads, the sound of blush words that aren't in the Bible. But when a tragic accident ruptures the family, her curiosity warps into a wild vortex of disturbing fantasies, unlocking a darkness that threatens to derail them all. So it's about a family that lives in the countryside of Holland. And like they're a farming family. I think they're like a dairy, like they make cheese, if I'm not mistaken, cheese and, and wine, um, cheese and wine, that's what I want. And one of the brothers um, dies in an accident. It's really in the beginning, so I don't feel like it's a spoiler. Um, he dies in an accident and it kind of like breaks this family. And the whole book is from the um, perspective of Yas, this uh, 10 year old girl, which is the first problem with his book, I think. Um, and I heard a review of this, which maybe influenced me slightly to see it that way. I, I am like uh, recognizing that that's a possibility. Um, I'll link the review down below. Issue is it's completely not believable that this main character is 10 because of how much um, she's, ob ob like, that how much she can observe and understand. And I mean, I agree. And I think that, you know, you're sometimes you see even more as a young person, as a child, and you pick up even more than when you are older, like, there's less of a filter and you're somehow more curious about life. I think that that's true. But there's something that does feel slightly unrealistic about this character being 10 with all of the things that she's also, not only that she's observing, but like things that she feels about life and death and religion. Um, Maybe it's possible. Um, it just, sometimes it's, it's, it's not like it's impossible, it's just questionable. So it's a question that comes to my head that if we're going for realism in this book, then I'm not sure it's 100% real that this 10 year old character like would be thinking like this, like would be thinking like this. For me, this book is a book of textures, like, we're talking about the dirt underneath the corner of the table. We're talking about the way that the milk starts to kind of get this um, thick layer at the top because it's so fresh and like when it's poured, it kind of curds a little bit. If that's the right word. Also gross things like the book is gross, which is most people's like, um, biggest issue with this book is that it's just like too much disgust like in your face all the time um, and kind of like what for and I haven't reached the end so I don't know I do identify with the fact that it is sort of like you're just grossed out a bit uh, the whole time and I, I'm not sure I'm against it I think I mean there's definitely a place for it and 
we're talking about grief in this book and how grief is affecting this family and it's it's affecting each of them in different ways and it's just permeating this family's environment like you feel something's broken and things are being like left behind and they're being left uncared cared for but i'm just not sure it's like what i want to what story i want to like be deep inside right now so I'm, I'm questioning it i was also made aware that the author they also write poetry which makes sense there's something very poetic about this um about this novel and i love poetic prose just sometimes i feel like there's one line of something like the, a very very poetic sentence and sometimes it just like comes out of nowhere after like i don't know a long description of like mm, bread on the table or something and i don't know how to explain it just like sometimes those sentences that i would normally love they feel out of place um so yeah i don't know jumbled jumbled feelings i think i think i'm gonna try to keep going i don't know so i think i'm gonna end the video here i just realized also the best lighting in the evening is in this bathroom um but anyway i think i'm gonna end it because i just want to wrap it up and then you can tell me how it was and then I can move on to another one. I'm realizing maybe it helps to have like some kind of goal, like whether it's to like read like one book and kind of document like the whole process of it, or I don't know. I mean, it's also nice to just kind of like see where it goes, but that's just what I'm thinking. I don't know. Anyway, you can let me know in the comments. I'm gonna take a shower, I'm having some wine, um, and, oh, I thought I would share with you what wine we're drinking. Actually, our local, um, wine shop, I guess, makes their own wine, and this is their Syrah Malbec, um, blend. I really like the label. Anyways. Guys, let me know how this video was, and see you later in the next one. Thank you for watching.